Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Burlakis presenting case 168 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of coronary computed tomography as well as FFR angio for guiding bifurcation PCI. The patient was a 70-year-old gentleman who presented with exertional dyspnea and was found to have anterior ischemia on a nuclear stress test. He subsequently underwent a coronary CT angiogram, and these are the MIP, or maximum intensity projections. We're seeing here that uh, there is a significant lesion of the ostium of the LAD. There is calcification, both in the left main as well as in the LAD. And that seems to be the culprit lesion that corresponds with the nuclear stress test. This is another way to look at the CT results. This is using the Clearly software. And we can see again a lesion at the ostium of the LAD. This is um, fairly uh, significant. There is not much calcium inside the lesion, but there is calcium just adjacent as well as in the left main. And uh, this is the way that the software presents the stenosis, which makes it simple. There is severe stenosis into the LAD. Also, it demonstrates the area of um, minimum lumen area, the MLA in the proximal LAD. And then it can also assess the aorta. So this is a short axis showing that uh, the left main is coming where it's supposed to. The distance from the contralateral aortic wall is 37 millimeters. So a standard uh, EBU or XP guide 35375 would work here. And this software also allows us to look uh, at uh, the plaque morphology. This is scrolling through the occlusion. And now we are putting on the morphology. The blue is calcium. There is calcium, but it's mainly located at one side of the vessel. And here we have some concentric calcium, which is a little further down into the LAD. And this concentric calcium could be an issue with stand expansion. And this is the same thing, looking at uh, what's called uh, uh, linear MPRs. These are multiplanal projections. Essentially, we do have calcium, and at some point the calcium seems to be circumferential. So planning the PCI, we do have the acronym MLD-MAX, which M stands for morphology, L for length, and D for diameter. And we can get all three components from the pre-procedural CT. There is calcium, which, can be, which was circumferential. Then we know that the length of the lesion was 28 millimeters. And the reference vessel diameter was 2.8 millimeters distally and 3.3 millimeters proximally. And this is now the coronary angiogram. There is this osteal LAD stenosis, as we knew from the coronary CT angiogram. There's a diagonal branch that also has some lesion in it, no significant disease into the circumflex. So we predilated, and uh, as expected, we did have good expansion. And then we deployed a 30 millimeter stand, 3.0 by 30 millimeter, based on the sizing we did by uh, coronary CCTA. We are jailing the diagonal, but we do have a wire to protect it. And again, we're doing provisional standing, both in terms of the diagonal, but also in terms of the circumflex, because there wasn't significant disease at the ostium of either the diagonal or the circumflex branch. And then we did proximal optimization with a 4.0 millimeter balloon. And this is what we have. We see that the LAD seems okay, but the ostium of the circumflex seems to be affected. And uh, there's also some question regarding the ostium of the diagonal branch. So what to do next? One way to assess this is by doing coronary physiology and now having the FFR angio. One can do this without necessarily reinserting a pressure wire. And the FFR angio in the diagonal was actually 0 0.89, suggesting that the stenosis here was not hemodynamically significant. We also did intravascular ultrasound. In the distal left main, we do have suboptimal expansion with an MLA of 5.75 millimeters square. So we decided to use intravascular lithotripsy, which helped expand that area. And then afterwards, on repeat IVUS, now we have 9.36 millimeters square. So significant improvement into the left main area. So here we are, but the circumflex still doesn't look optimal. So what can we do about this? Um, we did a kissing balloon inflation with a 3.5 and 3.0 millimeter balloon. 
and then another uh, proximal optimization with a 4.0 millimeter balloon and then here is the FFR angio on the lady afterwards which is pretty good although there's some diffuse disease further down and then we did uh, the same thing in the circumflex and the FFR angio was 0.93 so no significant stenosis into the circumflex and the patient did have a nice result with essentially a resolution of his symptoms several points to learn from this case. The first one is that uh, the coronary CT angiogram can help uh, to assess ischemia if we use the heart flow, but also to guide percutaneous coronary intervention. Here, there is no need to assess ischemia because the lesion was clearly highly stenotic. We did use provisional because the side branches, diagonal and circumflex did not have significant disease but we did protect both the circumflex as well as the diagonal. We did find stent under expansion with imaging, so we did use intravascular lithotripsy, and then we did use FFR angio to assess both the diagonal as well as the circumflex to decide whether anything needed to be done. Nothing was done for the diagonal. However, we did do kissing balloon inflation in the LAD as well as the circumflex. Thank you.